Hi, everyone, and welcome. My name is Colby Hawker, and I'm product manager for Google Cloud Natural Language AI. And I'm joined today by Eric Bursch, Senior Vice President of USA Today parent company, Gannett. Today, I'll be talking about how to maximize content relevance with large language models. First, I'm going to cover how natural language processing can improve content personalization and filtering. I'll talk about how we can gain understanding with a new era of language models. Then we'll talk about Google's natural language AI. And finally, we'll jump into some real industry applications and use cases, and we'll hear from Eric about how Google's natural language AI is used across the US Today network newsrooms. So let's start with a bridge between natural language processing and personalization. Modern organizations from digital media and news aggregators to ad platforms require some type of personalization to deliver relevant content. And in order to deliver the best content, understanding must come first. This content could be a web page, an audio transcription, or a social media forum. The big problem is that machines have always struggled with natural language. With advances in technology, there has always been this major gap between people and computers. The reason is that text is ambiguous. It's unstructured. Its meaning is dictated by context, positioning, and evolving connotations. Take a one-word example, server. The meaning can be very different across different scenarios. Server, can I have a check, is very different than the server when the point. You have to look beyond specific terms to get the real meaning. This is a daunting challenge that Google faces every day with billions of daily search queries. And a good fraction of these queries are brand new and have never been seen by Google before. So we need a language model. A language model learns to make predictions on text input based on patterns it has been exposed to. It learns from lots and lots of examples generated by real people. The outcome should mirror natural language and give us some information, whether that be some sort of text output or a signal that can be used and give us some sort of insight. Deep learning has given us richer content comprehension. And in the case of Google search, there was a big breakthrough with a type of model called the transformer. This represented one of the biggest leaps forward in the history of search. And it so happens that the technology that helps search understand user queries can also help media-rich organizations understand their content. For advertising, organizations need precision targeting to associate ads with a narrower user profile. And for content discovery, recommendation models and content filters are key. And given the massive amount of content generated every day, it's imperative to identify the most relevant trends in news stories and articles. So I'll talk a little bit now about how we can gain critical understanding through new advancements in language modeling. A large language model is what you get when you have a highly scalable transformer model, and then you add significantly more data and more parameters to compute. And when I say more, I mean orders of magnitude larger than standard models. Think of tens of billions of parameters, and this scale unlocks new capabilities. There are three advantages I'll highlight. One, transferable learnings across tasks and languages for high flexibility. Two, the model captures unique and evolving connotations with significantly more data. And three, enhanced ability to understand the contextual meaning. So first, one general model can transfer its knowledge across specific language tasks. And the deep pre-trained knowledge can also be used as a base to cater to specialized domains. You provide just a few samples, and the model will be upskilled for, say, something like sports or make predictions on sports data. In other words, we can fine tune for specialized classification while re retaining its prior knowledge. Secondly, 
Linguistic connotations are learned from massive amounts of natural language in the data it's exposed to, as you can see in the sample of neural embeddings. The idea is to measure similarity to better inform predictions. The more representation we get, the more performant. Lastly, the model can make better predictions about word references and context. As a simple example, what does it refer to? It has learned which words to attend to in order to understand its meaning. And with these advantages, large language models or LLMs can provide rich understanding of language. And that's really helpful, especially when it comes to granular insights that are required for a downstream personalization. You'll notice in this particular example, there's no explicit reference to clean or environmentally friendly, but it was able to gather enough information to make a good prediction. Now let's talk about the Google Cloud Natural Language API. Google Cloud is pleased to announce a new content classification model that incorporates the best of Google to give customers better predictions on text-based content. This release is a first step towards bringing the power of large language models to our customers for a popular use case. With this latest release, developers and practitioners can expect better insights, better ad targeting, and better recommendations for their users. With Google Cloud Natural Language, developers now have access to best-in-class language transformer with the distilled knowledge of the World Wide Web. And so what makes Google's new content classification so unique specifically? Well, first, it's incredibly expansive, now supporting over 100 different categories. Second, it's highly scalable across content types and languages. You can point to HTML or raw text, process both short form and long form content, and there's multilingual support for 11 languages. Finally, it's trained on a massive amount of web data at Google scale. As an example, you can segment and classify short text transcriptions with just a few lines of code. This is especially useful for podcasts or online forums. We could take a transcribed financial podcast and delineate between investing in commodities and futures and say investing in currencies. And even if the conversation is muddied with side conversation, you can still understand what was actually intended. In another example, you can point to a URL of a long online news article without the pre-processing. And you'll get a reliable signal to match users with relevant content. This longer article is about skincare, but it's littered with keywords like caffeine. And a traditional model misclassified this article as a beverage but the natural language API could make an accurate prediction with confidence. And that's mission critical because the signal will now be used for content-based filtering or a more sophisticated recommendation engine and to determine the content that is shown to users. So it's important that we get this right. With Google Cloud's natural language API, you can now get even more insight with less input and it's easy to use for critical downstream tasks. Now I'll turn the time over to Eric, who will speak briefly about how USA Today is using the Cloud Natural Language API for content targeting and other relevance-driven workflows. Over to you, Eric. Colby, thank you for the introduction and excited to, to join the conversation. Uh, just a little bit about my role at Gannett. I'm responsible for digital consumer product and engineering inside of our Gannett Media organization. Uh, I thought it'd be worthwhile to, to touch a little bit on, on Gannett and USA Today. Um, you know, Gannett is the parent company of USA Today, uh, obviously our, our national brand, very recognizable from a digital and, and print perspective. Um, you know, in alignment with our national brand, we have over 300 uh, local properties uh, that uh, some of those are, are very recognizable, such as Detroit Free Press, Arizona Republic, um, Indianapolis Star, et cetera. Um, and with that national and local mix, we really feel like it's extremely strong um, a strong play for Gannett and, and makes up the USA Today network. Um, one thing I like to talk about with, with USA Today network is, is the scale. Um, we, every month we have over 160 million unique visitors that, uh, that visit our products, our digital products across the USA Today network. So quite a large scale from that perspective. And then as we talk about content classification, 
another scale that's that's extremely important is how many articles we publish a day. We publish about 2,000 articles a day, and that's probably on the low end uh, across our U.S. Today network. So it was very important for us to align with a partner that could handle that type of scale uh, when we're talking about content classification. And you know, when we, we you, you'll hear a couple words that I, I talk about here, uh, you know, it's consistent, reliable, et cetera. Uh, but the ability to drive consistent, reliable classifications at that scale is is the first and foremost uh, piece that we wanted with a partner. We had other solutions in the past um, that required a lot more resource effort on our side to to drive uh, that consistency, and it didn't it didn't match what we're getting from the NL API um, it, it is provided to us now. So it's been a big win from that perspective. Um, you know, there is a revenue side to uh, us doing content classifications. Um, and that has been a, a dramatic game changer for our sales organization. Um, we heavily drive campaigns with different classifications. Um, you know, and that's really given uh, our sales teams a, a different side of a conversation to bring to uh, to partners on their side. Um, we had this to a certain degree again in our old uh, our old solution, but we've gone to a completely different level uh, because of the classifications um, with NLAPI. Um, I think in this day and age, there, there, there is a lot of uh, heavy news out there um, you know, with everything going on nationally in the world. Um, and what we've done from a sentiment analysis standpoint with NLAPI um, has really allowed us to open up uh, different product conversations and again, different revenue conversations. Um, and really what we've done is we've targeted um, you know, good or happy or lighter news, uh, as you might think about it, um, as and we've been presenting that through a product perspective. Uh, we've also um, had ad campaigns and, and partners that have wanted to associate themselves with you know with that with that type of content, and it's it's been a uh, you know big big bump for us from a sentiment analysis standpoint. Um, you know, last thing I'll say is is you know to to be able to understand the consumption pattern. Uh, insights, you'll need a solution that's that's extremely reliable. And you've heard me say that, you know, several times, you know, the standardized nature uh, of the classification vocabulary is a key to, to all that we do from that standpoint. Uh, because of small changes relatively slowly, um, we can base all sorts of pattern decisions on those results, which have has it has brought new product ideas to the table. Some of the specific products that we've rolled, rolled out recently, um, you heard mention Colby talking about personalization earlier in the deck, um, but this is this has enabled us to really expand out our level of personalization to our users of the US of the network through different products and our ability to align content classifications with, uh, with their consumption patterns and bring content throughout the US Today network to the forefront for them has been a, a, a big win for our users. I think secondly, the other product enhancement that we've been able to push forward with is the ability to automate you know, an audience facing front or story page to our users without having our editorial team have to manage that. And that was a result of our content classification consistency and having a high degree of confidence that what we were presented through that automated front to the user um, you know, really was was the correct content that we wanted. So as I transition from that into uh, you know, into the relationship that we've had with with Google, I, I first want to tip my cap to to Lou Schilling, who is internally at Gannett been our champion for for this product and this integration. Um, Lou has a couple of quotes here. I'm I'm not going to read the quotes. You guys can follow up on those. Uh, he's done a fabulous job on our side working with the Google team. Uh, the second you know area, I'll tip my hat to the Google NL API team. You know, we've asked a lot of them. We've asked a lot of uh, you know enhancements. Uh, you know as we've as we've gotten deep into the API, um, it's been a great relationship so far, and I really appreciate the effort that they've put in uh, from their side. So, Colby, thank you very much for uh, for having. Me. Thanks, Eric. We're certainly glad you were able to find uh, value in Google Cloud, and thanks everyone uh, who is viewing live. Um, you can find more information about Google Cloud Natural Language, as well as the content classification update on our website. Thanks, Eric, and thanks again for everyone who's watching, and we wish you all the best until next time. Thanks.